Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video we are going to be talking about alternative uses for tarot and oracle cards. people use tarot, oracle, angel and reading cards for one primary thing, divination. Whether that be divining the future or looking into the deepest parts of our minds and our souls, people typically use cards like tarot and oracle for this divination purpose. And that's essentially all they use them for. They don't go beyond using them for divination into using them for anything else. And so between readings, they likely sit in a box or a bag, in a drawer or on a shelf, waiting till the next time they are used for a reading. But they don't have to be. They can be used for other things other than divination, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Too many people finish a reading, they put them back in the bag, they put them back in the box, they put a crystal on them, or they sit it in a drawer and it's just left there till they decide they need to do a reading again. Now for some people they might do readings daily, for other people it might be months till that deck sees the light of day again. But there are other ways you can use the cards so they're not just sitting there for weeks, months, days, years, however long it might be, till you next want to do a divination reading. Now what I'm going to be talking about is going to be both for tarot as well as oracle, angel and reading cards. So you can really do it with anything as long as the cards themselves suit the intention of what you want to do. So the first big thing that you can do with reading cards in any form is to use them as a meditation tool. Now this is fantastic if you're working with oracle cards because a lot of oracle cards are mainly about soul searching, they're about adapting things within your own life and that's what makes oracle cards great and angel cards and reading cards great for doing meditation based on the cards. So when doing meditations on cards it's good to pick out something that you either need to bring forward into your life or something that you need to focus on to find an answer to. And so cards, especially oracle cards, are really, really great for that. Now I've pulled out just a few cards from the Work Your Light deck that are fantastic for doing meditations with. Now the idea of doing meditations on cards is that you go into a meditative state while focusing on the card itself. That could be the card's imagery. That could be the intuitive reading you've gained from that card. What is that card telling you? You focus your energy onto that card, you think about it as you clear everything else away, and then you look into yourself to find the answer to what the card is asking you. You don't have to do this with cards, you can do this with just questions yourself, but the cards offer a great additional tool for doing this with. This is a fantastic way of doing it as well if you are doing single card a day draws. So if you wake up in the morning, you sit with your cup of tea and you draw a single card out of your oracle deck, it could be good to take some time in that day to actually sit and do meditation work with that card in particular because there's a reason you drew it out that particular day. So the five cards from this deck that I thought would be fantastic to do this kind of meditation on are things like the Answering the Call card. So I know you're not going to be able to see this card all too well from over where you are, but essentially it's a card that calls on insight so that you can figure out the thing that you need to do for you within your life to progress. If you feel like you're stuck in a rut and you don't know where to go, doing meditation work on a card like this that asks a question of, what do you need to do? Right now, what is it that you need? Not what anyone else needs, not what your friends need or your family needs, what do you need right now? Find that thing to help you progress, spiritually, physically, whatever it may be. You then may find that there's other cards that call you to find something within yourself. So like this one, which is the Warrior Woman card, which is asking the question of if you weren't afraid, what is it that you would go and do? If fear wasn't holding you back, what would you choose to do? And if you can, figure out why you're afraid to do it. And if you can't figure out a good reason why, then maybe you should go and do it because it's what you deep down want to do. And so 
This card is designed to act as an archetype, as someone to aspire to, to be that person that steps outside of their comfort zone to do something that maybe they never thought they'd be able to do. And so meditating on this card might help to bring that up within yourself. You then have cards that might help within meditations and grounding sessions to help bring something to you. So this in particular is a grounding card. It tells you that you need to reconnect with nature. You need to reconnect with the earth, with yourself. You need to reground again. And sometimes that can be difficult in a busy life. And connecting with this card during meditation or during grounding can help you connect again to help act as that link. And if you're struggling to do that yourself, working with a card can be really, really useful. And then the last two cards that I've just pulled out really quickly are these two. Now these ask a similar thing of you, but for different intentions. So this card is trust the niggle. What is your gut trying to tell you that you might be ignoring? And this one is the crumbling. What are you clinging onto? These cards are asking you to look deep within yourself. It might not be something that's present on the surface. It might be something you need to go deep into a meditative state to figure it out. But deep down, there's something that you need to let go of. There's something you aren't figuring out. You aren't trusting your gut and you need to figure out why. And sometimes the cards, if you meditate with them, they can act to trigger that within yourself. They act as an external link to what you want to find out or what you want to achieve. And so they can be really, really useful for that. They don't have to be cards that look like this, they can be any kind of card, whether they are just simple word cards, whether they are crystal cards, animal cards, whatever they may be, you may well find that you are easier to connect with the energy of what you want to achieve if you're working with a physical object like a card. So doing card meditations can be super useful, especially if you maybe struggle to find answers within yourself without some kind of external source, whether that's a guided meditation or an object, you might find that cards are really, really useful. So the next thing that you can do with cards outside of just doing readings is using them in spell work and ritual. Now this is one of my favorite ways to use cards outside of divination and I think they can be so versatile. So the first technique for doing this is to use cards as representation. The idea being that if you are going to be doing a working on yourself or on someone else, rather than using a photograph, a name, a date of birth, a personal effect, a signature, whatever it may be, you can instead use a card that connects to them. Now this can be worked out in several different ways. It could be their birth card. So this can be worked out by adding up all of the numbers within your date of birth. So um, full date, full month, full year into a number and then making that number fall below 12. Now by doing this, you can find out your major arcana birth card and this card connects deeply to you. It's what you relate to in the deck of tarot. And you can work with these birth cards as representation for the person you want to achieve. You can add it onto an altar during spell work to connect that energy to that person. Now, it doesn't just have to be a birth card. It could just be a card that represents that person. So if you maybe don't know someone's date of birth, so you can't work out their birth card, but they are in a position that gives them some kind of card association, you can work that card in association or representation of them. So two good examples of this are these two cards. So this is the Fool card. So if you have someone in your life that needs to use a little bit more thought before they do things, you might want to use this card in representation of them. If you're gonna do a working to allow them to think before they speak or think before they act, then this card could be a fantastic representation for that person. Another way of doing it is using something like the justice card. So if you're gonna be doing a legal working, you might want to include the archetype of someone in the justice system to help justice prevail. So you might physically use the representation in a deck of cards to represent the person that you're going to be doing that working on. So this method is fantastic. You can use it as a tag lock if you're able to work out their birth card, which is pretty easy to work out if you have their full date of birth. 
or you can use them as representations based on their archetypes. So if someone fits into a particular archetype, you can use that. So if you want to do a working on a relationship, you can use the lover's card. If you want to do something legal, you can use the justice card and so on and so on. So they're great as archetypal representations in spell work and ritual. If you can get hold of a cheap deck or you can replicate pre-existing cards, so if you can scan them in, print it out and then cut it out, you can then actually physically use that in spell work. So it doesn't just have to be sitting on an altar. You can literally use that in spell work. If you want to do a binding on someone who's maybe making foolish decisions, you can physically use that photograph of that tarot card or the scan of that tarot card. You can use that as your petition in a binding spell like the other one I did on the channel. If you want to represent someone in law and you want to do a sweetening work on the situation at court, you can literally include an image of the justice card in that sweetening jar for that working. You can use them as petitions. You can use the images in jars, in bags, in dolls, in candle workings, whatever it may be. You can add that energy into that working because anyone that reads cards will know what these cards mean. It's that universal energy within the community that we're all aware of what they mean. And because of that, they have a lot of significance and they have a lot of power and they are wonderful for adding into workings. You don't just have to use cards in spell work to represent a person. They can also represent what you want to achieve. So I've got two cards out of the Work Your Light deck again, and these two are ideal for adding into workings that you want to attract things into your life. So this one is designed to raise vibrations, to make a shift within your life, to be able to improve yourself. And so you could scan this card and use it in your jar spells, you can use it in your sachet spells, you can just have it in your altar space to help attract that energy into your life during spell work. I then have another one here that's for almost the opposite. This is designed to help break things, to break bad behaviour, to break negativity, to change the path of things to come. So if you're doing a binding spell, you can always have this in the space during a binding spell to add extra energy into that working and to connect it more to what you want to achieve. These are just a few cards that you can use. There are other types of cards you can use like these. Now these are very much more assertive cards. This one is just acceptance. You can use this within a working if that is what you or someone else needs in your life to help bring everything to a close, to accept, to move on. These can be fabulous to meditate with, they can also be fabulous to add into workings. Whether that is sitting in an altar while you're doing your working to add extra energy, or adding physically into a working a copy of the card, so that you can then add that energy in. Now, I'm not in any way saying that you should photocopy cards and then resell them, or anything like that, no. Instead, if you want to use a card within your own personal practice, you don't have to physically destroy your copy of the card. You can instead use a photograph, use a photocopy for your personal use, just in that spell work and ritual, so that you can add that energy in without having to destroy the original card, because that would be such a shame if every time you wanted to use a card, you had to actually destroy the original like that. That would be really sad and I would hate for anyone to actually do that. And then the last way that I found to be really, really great is to connect with aspects of life, of religion, of cosmic energy on an altar space. Now this doesn't have to just be religious altars, although it can be. So cards can be added onto religious altars or representational altars for deities, spirits, saints as representation of that particular saint or deity or whoever it may be. So using cards on altars doesn't have to be religious, but it definitely can be. And there are lots of cards out there if you do want to have representations for deities, for saints, for spirits and whatnot, there are options. So the few that I have in my hands right now are cards such as Saint Joseph, Saint Francis, and also Saint Christopher, and you can actually add these onto altars if you want to work with their energy, if you want to petition to them, if you want to leave them offerings, give them thanks. It's great to use cards as representation on an altar for them. And if you have the cards available, 
why not use them? If you already have an altar for Saint Francis, you can then add his imagery onto that altar as additional representation for them. So in between working with the cards, or instead of working with the cards as reading cards, you are able to have them more of imagery, of representation, of symbolism for the person that you want to work with. So you can also have cards on altars that represent certain times of year, certain seasons, certain phases of the moon. I actually have one in this video, you just can't see it. It is just up there. Right there is my Samhain card because it is only just past Samhain. So I use it to represent the energy of the time and place. Now you don't just have to represent Sabbaths or times of the year, you can also represent other things. So there are cards that you can get such as this one which is the dark moon card. So if you work with the lunar energy a lot, you can have cards around that very closely represent something within lunar cycles. If you work with very specific moons, such as the wolf moon, you can also find decks that contain cards connected to the specific moons of the year. So you can have these on an altar if you wanted to, to help you connect and resonate with that energy. So you don't just have to have altars for the Sabbaths or the seasons or for deities and spirits. You can also have them for earthly things like elements, and you can often find elemental cards in decks. You can have it to represent moon phases, times of the year, Sabbaths, seasons, whatever it may be, you can find decks that contain cards like that. And if you already have loads of decks that contain cards like that, you can utilize them to your best advantage. So you can also add cards onto altars temporarily or long term in order to represent how you feel. So if you have an ancestor altar, there are cards out there such as this one, which is gratitude, that you can leave almost as a symbolic representation of what you're feeling towards a particular spirit, a particular deity, a particular person within your past life, your ancestry, that you can then leave thanks to. Now lastly, one of my favourite things to work with are manifestation altars. Now these altars are designed to manifest things within your life. So they're usually transient, they usually change as and when your life changes and your requirements change. And on these altars is usually a lot of colour correspondence, a lot of representation, association, lots of items that symbolise what you want to achieve, what you want to manifest whether that be that week, that month, that year, that season, whatever it may be. They offer as a physical representation of what you want to achieve. And by adding energy onto those altars, you can help manifest it in your life. And cards, particularly oracle cards and minor arcana cards, are fantastic for attracting things in through a manifestation altar. So just a few that I've pulled out of this Queen of the Moon deck are things like attraction. Just for general attraction, if it's the only card that you can find, something like an attraction card is fantastic. You also have cards for protection. So if you want to help bring protection to your life through an altar, you can add protection cards on there. Or people that you consider to represent protection. You then have things that you may need to work on in yourself. So you have cards such as fear. You need to work on that. It might be something that you need to have around you on a manifestation altar, not to manifest fear, but instead to manifest the resolve to correct the feelings that you have within yourself regarding fear. You can then add on positive cards. So things like self-love, fantastic to add onto a manifestation altar, or abundance. Probably one of my favorite cards in this entire deck is abundance. Adding cards onto altars in this way is a great way of physically representing what you want to achieve in a manner that isn't just an object. So say on a prosperity altar or an abundance altar, you might use representations in crystals. So you might have on there some citrine, some aventurine. Um, you might have herbs such as rose and marigold. You might have colours such as um, pink and green and very vibrant um, colours and yellow. You might have objects that represent the abundance that you want to achieve. You might have candles. You might have petitions, symbols, runes. But by adding a card with such detailed imagery onto a representational manifestation altar, you can amp up that energy so, so quickly. And that's what's so great about them because cards are so powerful within their own right. And if you work with them as a deck, they're imbued with your own energy. Adding that into an altar it immediately makes it so much more powerful. 
Now it doesn't just have to be oracle, it can be tarot. So if you know that you want to bring money into your life, you could work with the pentacle suits and you can work with whichever card within pentacle that suits your desired intention the best and add that onto an altar. And it's a fantastic way of adding that energy in without having to have a million little tiny objects. You can have it just quite simple with a card, a petition and some color. And that's all you really need to make a fantastic manifestation altar. So if you do have a deck of cards and you maybe don't read from them as often as you think you should, or you do read from them but you want to know what else you can do, those are just a few of the ways that I have personally used cards beyond just divination. Cards are such wonderful tools that I think it's such a shame that we don't use them more. A lot of the time we see cards as a way of doing psychic reading. And once that psychic reading is over, that's it, they're packed away till the next time. And I think it's such a shame because they have such power, such energy, such stunning artwork and emotion behind them that I think they should definitely be used more. So I hope that this video was useful. I know a lot of you have been asking for it for a while. So I hope that it was useful for you guys. Hopefully in the future, I'll come up with a few more things that you can do with your reading cards outside of just doing readings. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like. It really, really means so much to me. And let me know what kind of videos you guys really like watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community down in the comment section, feel free to post a comment. And if you enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I post new magical content every Wednesday and every Saturday at 6 p.m. And if you got this far in the video, Thank you very much, I really, really appreciate it. And also, what is your favorite way to use cards outside of divination? I would really, really like to know. So I hope you guys have a marvelous, magical day, and I will see you in the next video.